Hello everyone. Welcome to the module on the nervous system. In this module, we will talk about a pathology of neurology module that is ischemic brain diseases or ischemic brain stroke or rather simply said ischemic stroke. Okay. So let us get started with ischemic brain diseases fundamental principles. Okay. Now, in this pathology of neurology module, there is an irreversible neuronal injury. Okay, there is a neuronal injury that begins five minutes after hypoxia. Okay, so remember the irreversible and five minutes of hypoxia. Now, the most vulnerable places in the brain are hippocampus, neocortex cerebellum that is the Purkinje cells of cerebellum and watershed areas which are and hence these are remembered as vulnerable hippos need pure water vulnerable areas are hippocampus neocortex Purkinje cells and watershed areas am i clear so these are irreversible neuronal changes that begins in five minutes of hypoxia which majorly affects hippocampus neocortex cerebellum and watershed areas of the brain now the stroke imaging now what kind of imaging is required to diagnose ischemic stroke it is a non-contrast ct of the brain and it is majorly used to exclude hemorrhage okay now this is give this is done before tpa can be given and the CT detects ischemic changes in 6 to 24 hours. Is this clear? Now, diffuse weighed MRI can detect ischemia within 3 to 30 minutes. So, remember that MRI is a fast method to determine a ischemic stroke, whereas CT scan is majorly used to exclude hemorrhage. Am I clear? Now let me just give you histologic features at different time intervals after the ischemic stroke. In 12 to 24 hours after the ischemic stroke, there is eosinophilic cytoplasm with kinotic nuclei. That means the nuclei is broken down and there is presence of red neurons. Okay, So there is excessive eosinophil in the cytoplasm with red neurons. Now, this happens in 12 to 24 hours. Now, after that, that is between 24 to 72 hours, there is necrosis and presence of neutrophils. That means, after 24 hours, there is starting of, correct, the inflammatory response. Am I clear? So, there is presence of new necrosis and neutrophils. Now, three to five days after the ischemic stroke, there is presence of macrophages or microglia. And one to two weeks after the ischemic stroke, there is reactive gliosis. Now, gliosis occurs due to astrocytes. Okay, So, remember that astrocytes plays a very important role in reactive gliosis. And with reactive gliosis, there is presence of vascular proliferation. Am I clear? So, there is eosinophilic cytoplasm with kinotic nuclei, necrosis and neutrophils, macrophages, reactive gliosis plus vascular proliferation and last is glial scar. So, are we comfortable with the basic fundamentals of ischemic stroke? Now, talking about ischemic stroke in detail, it is due to acute blockage of vessels. Okay, which leads to disruption of the blood flow and hence leads to subsequent ischemia. So, it is like every other organ which leads to ischemia and that is disruption of the blood flow which leads to ischemia. Now, due to decrease in the blood reaching the organ, it leads to infarction and since it is in the brain, it leads to liquefactive necrosis. So, please remember that there is liquefactive necrosis. Unlike the other organs which produce coagulative necrosis, there is liquefactive necrosis in brain. Am I clear? Now, there are three major types of ischemic stroke. That is thrombotic stroke, embolic stroke and hypoxic stroke. 
okay we'll talk about each of them in thrombotic stroke there is a clot formed directly at the site of infarction okay so whenever there is a formation of a clot at the site of infarction commonly in the middle cerebral artery okay so look at this ct scan whenever a middle cerebral artery is blocked this is the infarcted area of the brain am i clear now this is usually over a ruptured atherosclerotic plaque am i clear so that is all about thrombotic stroke talking about embolic stroke whenever there is a formation of embolus from another part of the body and obstructs a vessel that leads to blood flow to the brain it is called as embolic stroke now it can affect multiple vascular territories okay and the various examples that produces a emboli are atrial fibrillation carotid artery stenosis deep vein thrombosis with presence of foramen ovale patent foramen ovale and infective endocarditis i've covered all of them in the cardiology module so please check that out so whenever a pres- there is a presence of emboli which obstructs a blood vessel later on which supplies brain it is called as embolic stroke and talking about hypoxic stroke this is due to hypoperfusion or hypoxemia of the brain okay so whenever there is less blood that reaches to the brain or less blood perfused to the brain it is called as hypoxic stroke or hypoxemia am i clear now this is very common during cardiovascular surgeries that tends to affect watershed areas that means the areas which are more susceptible to hypoxia now what is the treatment the treatment is tpa if it is within 3 to 4.5 hours of onset of the ischemic stroke and there is no hemorrhage noticed is this clear because tpa leads to risk of hemorrhage or there can be thrombectomy if there is presence of thrombi there there is a reduced risk with medical therapy that means whenever a person is administered with aspirin or clodipegrol there is a decreased risk and optimum control of blood pressure blood sugar lipids are usually required to stop ischemic stroke that means they need to control the various mechanism that can lead to thrombosis or emboli formation am i clear so this is the major chunk of ischemic stroke now talking about transient ischemic attack that means this is a brief ischemic attack which is a reversible episode of focal neurologic dysfunction that means if a reversible episode of just a minor part of the brain is affected without any infarction that means there is no infarction seen on the mri and it usually resolves in less than 15 minutes it is called as transient ischemic stroke okay now it is majorly due to an emboli or small vessel stenosis so remember that transient ischemic stroke is due to focal neurologic dysfunction resolving in less than 15 minutes and it is reversible am i clear now talking about a very small topic which usually turns up on the examination that is neonatal intraventricular hemorrhage now i'll be talking more about hemorrhage and hematomas in a different module altogether but just this is a quite connection for ischemic stroke so i've covered it in this module neonatal intraventricular hemorrhage is basically bleeding into the ventricle okay so it is basically bleeding into the ventricle which is seen on this sonography plate okay and it shows blood in the right ventricular space okay right intraventricular space extending to the periventricular white matter is this clear so basically it is the bleeding into the ventricles now there is a increased risk in premature babies and low birth weight infants so if a baby or a infant is born with less weight at the time of birth or it is born before the period of gestation that is premature delivery they can lead to intraventricular hemorrhage am i clear
now this usually originates in the germinal matrix so the origin is very important which is usually tested in the exam so it originates in the germinal matrix which is a highly vascularized layer within the subventricular zone okay now due to the reduced glial fiber support and impaired auto regulation of the blood blood pressure in the premature infants which is a normal case that means the glial fiber support or the astrocytes are usually less and there is not much of blood pressure regulation in premature infants it can present with altered level of confusion or consciousness bulging fontanel hypotension seizures and coma am i clear so this is all about ischemic stroke and neonatal intraventricular hemorrhage thank you for watching this video If you enjoyed the video please click on the like button and do subscribe to this channel let me know in the comment section below which topics do you want me to explain thank you